On today's show, we look into how one trendy activity is bringing some cuddly faces to the DFW area. And we look into these students behind theater's one act play, these stories, and more on this edition of Hilltop News. What's rockin' Rock Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Hilltop News. Live from Studio 1060, I'm Aiden Richmond. And I'm Bronwyn Liber. We've got a great show in store for you today, but first, Bronwyn is going to catch you up with all things coming up on the Hill. Bronwyn? Thanks, Aiden. As the end of the nine weeks approaches and graduation is right around the corners, seniors, it's time to pick up your caps and gowns. Pickup will be tomorrow in the main common area during lunches. Seniors should pick up their caps and gowns during their assigned lunch period. On Saturday, March 19th, Hope Squad is hosting the second annual Community Hope Walk. The event will run from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Children's Health Stadium. There will also be games, our band, and performances from many of our students. Due to a decrease in number of COVID cases in the area, Prosper ISD is shifting COVID protocols to fit the CDC and Health Department's suggestions. Families should still fill in the COVID screening questionnaire online, but students only have to be quarantined five days after they test positive. Over 50 books were removed from the library last week due to formal challenges from community members. Curriculum and instructor director Teresa Biggs shared with the Hilltop News this statement. District librarians work to maintain a balanced collection representing various views when selecting library materials. Occasional objections concerning the appropriateness of some of these materials in the school library may arise. And if a parent would like to formally challenge the title, the district forms a reconsideration committee made up of parents, teachers, administrators, librarians, the library service coordinator, and a dir district director. Once this committee has read and reviewed these library books and released their findings, some of the books could be returned to campus, and non-approved books will be disposed of following district guidelines. The Rockets were in action this past week, with them bringing home three team first place finishes, two officer first place finishes, an officer grand champions, and a first team runner-up. DECA was also in action this past weekend. Both DT and Akasha Carr were ICDC qualifiers, as well as David Iommi became a state finalist. The Nest was also recognized as a gold certified school store. Last week, Rock Hill Chamber Orchestra competed at the UIL concert. They received a superior rating in concert and sight reading from all six judges at the Region 24 UIL competition, where they also earned a sweepstakes trophy. As well as Color Guard, who finished fourth in the region at their first ever competition last week. And finally, Drumline, who competed at their first ever indoor drumline competition, gaining a second place finish. There are also a lot of events going on around campus this week. Here's a quick preview on what's going on around the hill. Last Friday, Theater Department had their showing of their UIL one-act play. Reporter Braden Serenowitz looks into how the department works together to make it happen. Taking to the stage as well as taking to the ring, with their portrayal of the sweet science of bruising, theater adds a little punch to the under 40-minute performance. It follows four women, um, Violet Hunter, Matilda Blackwell, Polly Stokes, and Anna Lamb, and it follows them in their entire journey on their way from women empowerment, and a lot of them find this empowerment through boxing. <laughs> Not only promoting empowerment for women, but also of all different ages, as each of the four female boxers come from each of the different grade levels. It's been amazing working with people from all different grade levels with, you know, different levels of experience. Um, I love all the freshmen, they're so talented, and the juniors and seniors who I've known from last year, and new juniors and seniors who I haven't really gotten to meet, it's been amazing getting to know them. The people who are older than me, it's really just impressive to watch them and like it gives me more experience like I'll watch like Margaret or Ella and I'll see some of the choices that they're making and it's just impressive because their character choices are amazing and it's really quite interesting to watch and think about. As well as offering each other new perspectives on their characters, being in a diverse cast creates opportunities for upperclassmen to show those with less experience what it means to be in a one-act production. Um, being a junior, I've definitely always taken kind of a leadership role, but being an upperclassman, I've definitely had to step into that role even more. Um, since there are lower classmen that don't have as much experience, I kind of get to help them through it. And they, they're teaching me things too. We're honestly all helping each other. I've tried to really get to know each one of these cast members because I don't have another year with them. And some of them, um, this is my last show with some of these people, so I'm really just trying to foster those friendships and 
being able to put as much as I can into this last show because it's the last one that I'll get. Keeping their unique group dynamic as they take their show on the road, theater competes at Zone this Wednesday in the Colony. For Hilltop News, I'm Brian Serenowitz. Don't worry, if you miss the show on Friday, theater will be back for more public performances after competition. March 1st is the general elections, including candidates for Congress, judge, district clerk, and others. For a list of election day voting centers, visit ColinCountyTX.gov. As conflict between Russia and Ukraine continues, Russia remains attacking key cities within Ukraine, such as Kharkiv and Chernobyl, on their way to the capital city, Kyiv. However, Russian forces have been met with unexpected resistance within Ukraine and many other countries imposing sanctions on Russia, going as far as taking Russia out of the international payment gateway, SWIFT. This isolates Russia from the international financial system, which will greatly impact their economy. Ukraine and Russia have agreed to peace talks on the Belarusian border, which could lead to a potential ceasefire. Even with talks of potential peace, Russia has also put their nuclear deterrent forces on high alert. Multitasking is a difficult skill to master, and Veronica Volchak reports on a trending fitness class that teaches yoga while incorporating acute distraction. Yoga has always been a way for people to release stress in their bodies. However, a little addition renewed it in an adorable way, doing yoga with goats. We had pet goats in the city of Richardson. It's not outlawed to have goats as pets. So we did have two pet goats. Pygmy and Nigerian dwarf goats don't get very large. So they make perfect backyard pets in pairs because they're very social animals. So never want to have a goat by itself. But that's kind of how it got started. We had a huge backyard and I thought, why not just have the neighborhood over? Since the start in their backyard, Goat Yoga Dallas has grown tremendously. Not only are these classes entertaining and trendy, but they are a great way to use yoga to find your inner peace while letting goats take a piece of your heart. Oh, they're so cute. I mean, how can you not love them? Uh, it just makes you feel, especially when they're on you, it's pretty a different experience. You're like, yeah. You know, so I think it uh, makes me closer to them. I love them. They're cute. It was really fun. Yeah, cold. It was really fun to see the goats. <laughs> During goat yoga, participants can be more carefree and can let go of their stress not only physically through stretching, but mentally by spending time with the enthusiastic and charming animals. Honestly, it's unbelievably beautiful. Like, everybody leaves here feeling better, no matter what. You know, like, you don't come here and not have a good time. After taking this class, I can definitely say that this is like no other yoga class, and that these goats are definitely here to namaste. For Hilltop News, I'm Veronica Volchak. Goat Yoga Dallas has their next close-by event at Union Park off of 380 on March 12th. For their event info and tickets, go to their Instagram at Goat Yoga Dallas. Now this past week, basketball had their first two playoff games. I had the chance to catch up with our head coach and our leading scorer after the big win Friday night. I'm here post game of round two of the playoffs with Anthony Williams and Coach Williams. Uh, first up, Anthony, what exactly do you have to say about the game? Uh, it was a really good game uh, and it was really fun. That's good. And for Coach, what exactly were you telling your players going into this game? So the one thing I told them is we will face adversity, just keep playing. And they showed that tonight with us being down eight in the fourth quarter and coming back to win by I think five or six. So I'm really proud of him as a senior. I, I know I don't tell him a lot, but he, he stepped up and made some big plays tonight. As we, Anthony, as we kind of saw you step up, what exactly were you telling your teammates to encourage them throughout the game? Because you guys were down in the first half. I told them to keep the heads up, keep playing. Um, I had a feeling we were going to come back. And Coach, back to you again. Uh, what exactly are you guys going to be doing to prepare, and what are you going to do to tell them for the next match, round three? So right now we're going to celebrate this win. I'm, I promise them I'll take them to IHOP if they win today. So uh, tonight, uh, tomorrow morning we'll be at IHOP, and I think about the next round tomorrow. Well, y'all had a great team win tonight, and good luck in round three. Thank you, Bronwyn. Now, Ashley Salloway is in studio to give you the rest of the information on basketball's wins, as well as everything else Rock Hill Sports. Ashley? Thank you, Aiden. Basketball started off playoff action last Tuesday versus Liberty. It was a back and forth game going into the first half, going into halftime tied 24 to 24. Our Blue Hawks came out of the half strong and never slowed down, eventually defeating Liberty 55 to 47 to move on to round two. In round two, they matched up against WT White last Friday. Rock Hill got out to a slow start going down 10 in the first quarter, but big performances from Anthony Williams, who dropped 27 on the night, and Grant Jetson, who recorded a double-double with 16 points and 10 rebounds let our boys pass the Longhorns 68 to 63. The next game for basketball will be tomorrow night at Richardson Berkner versus Dallas Kimball. 
Boys soccer was also in action this last Tuesday against Colony. A hat trick by Caleb Zavala and a goal from Ashton Medina led our Blue Hawks to a 4-1 win. They continued their momentum Friday when they played at home Friday versus McKinney North. Rock Hill controlled the entire game, never giving McKinney North the chance to take the lead. Goals from Ashton Medina and Anthony Reed gave us the win 2-0. Girls soccer also faced off against the Colony and McKinney North this past week. Starting off against the Colony, it was a close one. The entire 90 minutes, but goals from Jocelyn Lurcher edged our girls past the Colony 3-2. Friday, our Blue Hawks traveled out to McKinney North with the potential to clinch a playoff berth. With that in mind, our girls went out and dominated both sides of the field with three goals from Jordan Hardiman, Elena Aiken, and Brooke Walpole, as well as a shutout from Ella Copenhager, giving Rock Hill the 3-1 the 3-0 win. With four games left in the regular season, the girls' soccer is sitting at a 16-0-1 record and a 9-0-1 record in district, making them a lock for playoffs. While soccer's district matches are nearing an end, baseball season is just getting underway. Baseball had their first two games this last week at home on Friday. They started off the season on a high note against Vista Ridge 4-0, followed by a 7-2 win against McKinney High. Due to the winter weather that blew through this past week, the rest of their games this weekend did get canceled. Like baseball, we also saw track, field, golf, and tennis all have to cancel their meets this past week. One sport that was able to avoid the weather was softball. Softball still managed to have five games this past week, starting off on Tuesday against Braswell. Our Blue Hawks dominated that one all around, winning 10-0. to, 10 to 0. Big performance from Taylor Hagen, who set a school record pitching softball's first perfect game. She pitched five innings and allowed zero hits and struck out five batters. Softball's next four games were away at Allen for a tournament. They came out even in those games, winning two against Belton and Forney, as well as falling in Rockwell to Allen. Archery offers more than just a shooting with a bow. Emily Wilhouse looks into archery and how opportunities it gives to students. To the outside world, archery looks like shooting an arrow at a target. But for the archery team, their competitions go far beyond the simple bow and arrow. I believe at times at school, the kids sometimes feel pressured with, you know, homework, you know, getting ready for quizzes. And Archie will give them that release where they can just come in, not worry about anything outside, but worrying, but focusing on their archery steps and making sure that they can leave everything at the door and just focus. This one also teaches confidence and leadership skills these students can transfer into the real world. By doing archery, I've grown some leadership skills being on the leadership team. And also, um, I've made friends that I would have never thought of and made, you know, just have their encouragement from the team. With practices twice a week, the team continues to focus on the concept of archery itself, as well as being mindful and encouraging of each other. Uh, it challenges them to be more mindful and focus on their body, what they're doing when they're going ahead and going through the motion of the 11 steps of archery. It allows them to more focus within and really creates a balance within themselves. The archery team continues to learn and grow as they continue with their season. For Hilltop News, I'm Emily Wilhouse. If you are thinking about joining the Archery Club, you can get more information by talking to Coach Vasquez. Now there are a lot of sports teams in action this next week, so here is a quick preview of all the events this next week. Well, that's all we have for today's show. For Hilltop News, I'm Ashley Salloway. I'm Aiden Richmond. And I'm Bronwyn Leiber. Keep rocking, Blue Hawks. <laughs>